Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumstheword.com. Welcome to this free mini song lesson. Boy, have I got a treat for you today. This song has been requested many, many times from me over on my Facebook page. And so I'm very, very excited and happy to be able to teach you today the song Kashmir by Led Zeppelin, drummed by, yeah, you know who, Mr. John Bonham himself. And I've got three pages of PDF uh, notation you can download from my website for free. So go over to there right now, you'll find a link beneath this video and have this printed out in front of you as we go through this together. It'll make the lesson a lot easier to understand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 different sections that I think make up the majority of this song, the most iconic parts, the most difficult parts. Um, and basically, with, with this, you've, you've got the whole song down. If you want to make your own, your own song suggestions, then you can go over to my Facebook page. You'll find a link for the for the page again beneath this video. I've just recently put a post up where I'm asking for song suggestions that my followers get to make their suggestions and others get to like them and, and upvote them and the more popular songs get chosen for future lessons. So go over there if you want to make your own song suggestions. Okay, so let me start. Wrong page, that's a good start. So 82 BPM, really nice rocky tempo this. And what I've got here for the first example is the album and the live version. So there's lots of discussion about this online uh, and I've come to the conclusion, and I might be wrong because I couldn't find an isolate, a proper isolated drum track of this song, that what John is playing on the album and it's confirmed when you see him play it live, I haven't seen him play it any other way, he's simply playing a rock solid simple drum beat. And with an effect of an echo, uh, probably the same effect that he used on, um, oh, uh, when the levee breaks, it sounds very similar. It's creating like a, a, a double bass drum effect. And we'll get onto that in the next example. But I just wanted to make sure that you understood that this is what he's actually playing on the album. And again, you can, you can see him play it live as well. So just sort of confirmed it for me. So before we go to the, the uh, next version, let me just play that up to speed for you a couple of times. Okay, so this next version uh, I've written here, how, I do, how I would replicate the echo effect on the bass drum live. So this is what a lot of drummers do when they're playing along with this song or when they're in a Led Zeppelin covers, cover band. People are sort of expecting to hear that, that double bass drum note because they can hear it on the recording. Even though it's not actually being played physically, it's an echo. You wanna sort of be able to replicate that. And I certainly would when I would play it live. So um, we'll take a look at the next example. We've got one and two and three. 3 E and 4 and you've got the 3 E and there, the two bass drums next to each other, 3 E and 4 and. So with this example, 1 and 2 and 3 E and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 E and 4 and 1, 2, 3 E, 4, 1, 2, 3 E. So you can improvise with that. I wouldn't recommend you play every single downbeat on beat 1 as well as beat 3. It's a bit too much. And when you see Jason Bonham play it um, live with Zeppelin, that's uh, John Bonham's son, by the way, he doesn't play it every time either. He leaves gaps between playing that dun dun. Um, so you might play something like. It just makes it more interesting, makes it more exciting, in my opinion, where you're not overplaying it every single time. You're sort of leaving it out and then putting it in where you think it sounds cool. So improvise with it. Um, I wouldn't put it every single beat, but um, play around with it. Anyway, let's hear that played up to speed a couple of times. So then at 1 minute 08, we're starting simple with these drum fills, they get more complicated. We've got uh, the first example of, of Bonham playing this uh, little drum fill at the end. Very, very simple. I wanted to include it because you might not have um, noticed that he's actually playing it with the hi-hat. So we've got the drum beat before. One and two and three and four. But then for the and of beat four, he plays and uh, and uh. Really subtle. It doesn't really matter. Later in the song, he does play it just right, left. 
but this first time he plays it with the hi-hat, so his left hand does both the snare drum notes. And I think that sort of maintains the hi-hat groove. Well, it does. So feel free to play it that way, but I just thought, I'd, just for interest, I thought I'd include this to show you what Bond's playing with the hi-hat. So let me hear, <laughs> I'll let you hear now that up to speed a couple of times. Okay, then at 2 minutes 09 we get this really cool section. One little bar of odd time in the entire 8 minute track. It's just one little bar of odd time and it's brilliant. Um, I love it. So what I've got for you is the first bar of this, this uh, 5 bar example. The first bar is a bar of 9-8. Now you could choose to use any subdivision like you could have a bar of 4-4 four, four, and then a bar of 1-4. Uh, no, it'd be a bar of 1-8. <laughs> that seems a little bit silly, so I thought I'd just add it to the end of the previous bar of 4-4. Four, four. So it turns into a bar of 9-8, and all that means is there's one extra eighth note in the bar. Usually a bar of 4-4 four, four has eight eighth notes in the bar, well this has nine eighth notes. So to make it sort of easier to count, in my opinion, I change the counting when I'm playing a bar of something eight into each eighth note equals uh, a counted beat. So we got the first part of the bar, just standard drum beat, but we're counting something different over the top of it. You don't have to. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then where the snare drum would fall on beat four, we're gonna play six sixteenth notes. Instead of just four, which would take us out neatly in the bar of four, four, we're gonna play an extra two at the end, which makes it a bar of nine, eight. And I've ca I'm gonna count it seven and eight and nine and. There's no easy way to sort of count this. You, you count it 4E and a 5E1. I'm going to count it 7 and, seven and 8 and 9 and 1. 7 and 8 and 9 and 1. Or you could just sort of feel it as six notes. You could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. But it's six sixteenth notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. And then that is the new downbeat. We go back to playing in 4, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Five, uh, four E and uh, five E, or seven and eight and nine and. So then we go on to the next bar, and we get this um, uh, repeating idea. These four bars get repeated at least twice or three or four times in these sections. The bass drums are all playing on the ands. So the, so the first bar, we're back to four four now. One and two and three and four and. Second bar, one and two and, and then he plays this. Three E and four E and. 3E and 4E and. So 1 and 2 and 3E and 4E and. So then we go on to the next line and back to our, our first bar there of 4 4. 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and. All the bass drums on the ands. And then the second bar 1 and 2 and. And then he does repeat this exactly the same every time. So we, he purposely came up with this, this fill and does repeat it. He plays. 3E e and a, uh, 4E e and a. Uh. So a line of, of 16th notes. 3E e and then and a, uh, and then 4E e and then and a. Uh. And that ghost note, that note at the end is a ghost note. It's played quietly. You don't want to play it too loud otherwise it stands out. On a recording you hear it, you, you feel it. It's sort, of, it's sort of there but it's not standing out. So a ghost note. So that, that second bar, 1 and 2 and 3E e and a, uh, 4E e and a, uh, 1. So there's two bars at the bottom, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and a four, and a one. Now, <coughs> excuse me, and now let's hear all those bars played up to speed without me yakking over the top. Here we go. So then on to page two of the notation, and at two minutes 47, we get an iconic John Bonham lick. First bar is, um, uh, we've gone over this already, one, two, and three, and four, and. It's the second bar, one, and two, and. And then we get the Bonham bass drum triplets. You probably heard about the Bonham triplets, right, left, right, bass drum. He wasn't the first to come up with this, by the way, but he certainly made it famous amongst drummers.
that's the bottom triplet. What we've got here are the bottom bass drum triplets, where he likes to play the second and third note of a triplet. So we're playing three to to and. I'm counting them as sixteenth notes, triplets. Three to to and. Three to to and. Same for beat four, but he ends it with the snare drum on the upbeat on the and of four. Four to to and. Four to to and. So we get three to to and, four to to and. And that only really makes sense when you play it in context because you, you feel those bass drum notes as triplets, not as sixteenth notes. Well, if you play them as sixteenth notes, the second bass drum note would fall with the next hi-hat. So those two bass drum notes need to be in between the hi-hats. Um, that's the basic way of thinking about it, but if, you, if you've got your triplets down in your head, then you can feel it as well. So that second bar, one and two and three to and four to and one, I'll do it again, and three to and four to and, and two bars together, one, two and three and four and one and two, three to and four to and one. This flows so nicely. That's the one way to practice it, by the way. Well, don't move your right hand around too much, but just get comfortable playing hearing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, as three evenly spaced notes. Lots of fun to play, great places to, um, and loads of fun places to put it in songs. So let's hear those two bars played up to speed. So then at 3 minute 39, we've got another drum fill. First bar, one, two, three, and four, and. And he might be playing some ghost notes in there that I didn't spot. Later in this lesson, we're gonna go over some bars where I do hear the ghost notes. So you might hear something that I missed, but I don't think he's playing that many ghost notes here. And they usually are not obvious, but you can sort of feel them. And I didn't hear any ghost notes in that bar, but I might be wrong. There might be a ghost note just before beat three. One, two, and three, because he does that a lot in this song. One, two, a three, and a three, and. Anyway, the second bar, we get one and two and. Two snare drum notes there with the open hi-hat. Two and three, bass drum and hi-hat. And then we're gonna go straight into 16th note triplets. So again, just like the bass, bottom bass drum pattern, we're playing 16th note triplets. Six of them fit in the whole beat. So we get three to ta and ta ta, three to ta and ta ta. The hi-hat then closes as he, as he moves up to his rack tom. Four to, and then I think he just plays the last four notes on one tom. He could play, and that would sound cool as well, but I didn't hear a final dip in pitch for the last two notes. It sounds like he's just playing the last four notes on one tom. This stuff doesn't really matter. Uh, I would probably play it just because that's a traditional way to go two, two, two with 16th note triplets, but I think he's playing two, four. So that second bar, one and two and three to and to four to to and to one. Or one and two and three to and to four to and to one. By the way, that open hi-hat closes on beat four where he goes up to his first rack tom. So let's hear those two bars played up to speed. So then at three minute 50, we get another little drum fill, um, and I like this, uh, Bonham's playing around with the feel, and I, you do hear some ghost notes being played. So the first part, I don't think I heard any ghost notes. One, two, three, and four, and. The second bar, I felt them, I heard them. One, E, and, one, E, and, and then two, and, then three, E, and, another ghost note there in between. Three, E, and, open hi-hat, three, E, and, then a closed hi-hat, four, and he plays four E and a. Uh. Another classic Bonham lick where he um, uh, plays a ghost note after the bat beats. Not really Bonham classic, it's just a lot of drummers do that, including myself. It just fills out the notes, but you're not really hearing the E, you're hearing the ander at the end. Just fills it out nicely. So we get to the second bar, one E and two and the E and four E and a one. You could play four, uh, four E, um, four E. Don't have to play the hi-hat with it. You could come down to the snare drum. Four E and a one. I'm playing right, left, right, left if you wanted to. 
Um, no one's going to miss that hi-hat because it's closing there anyway. So that's our second bar. One, eat, and two, and three, and four, eat, and a one. Really nice. So let's hear those two bars up to speed. So then at four minutes, oh two, we get another drum fill. One, two, a three, and four, and. I did hear the ghost note there on the uh of two. And a three, and he plays four, and two snare drum notes. Into the second bar. One, and two, and. And then some kind of cool effect is added to the snare drum um, when he plays these, these big, long, um, single stroke rolls. And this is the first time you sort of hear it, and it's building up in volume. I've got the crescendo notation underneath it, meaning you're sort of building up in volume towards the end of the fill. It's just 16th note triplets starting on beat three, going into beat four, all the way to the end of the bar, but building up in volume, starting with the bass drum and hi-hats. Three to ta and ta ta four to ta and ta ta one. So that second bar, one and two and three to ta and ta ta four to ta and ta ta one. You start with the right hand here, you end up with the right hand up here. So let's hear those two bars up to speed. So at six minute 42, we get an interesting um, uh, drum fill here. Uh, they're all interesting, but this, this is, uh, uh, I say interesting because um, I couldn't be 100% sure of what I was hearing. It's deep in the mix, so I'm pretty sure this is what he's playing. Uh, the first bar, standard stuff with a little ghost note at the end. One, two, three, and four, a one, and a one. Then the second bar, one, and two, and open hi-hat, two, and three. And just like the triplets where we played, we're gonna play instead 30 second notes. So 30 second notes, we can fit two to every 16th notes. Uh, basically, you start with your right hand and you end with your right hand on the and a three where the hi-hat close, closes. Now that's the bit I couldn't be sure about, whether he's playing 30 second notes or some um, uh, mistake, like he's trying to play triplets or and he doesn't quite get it in time. I think he's, uh, he's better than that. So I'm pretty sure I'm hearing 30 second notes and he does repeat 30 second notes later on, so he, he can play them. So at this tempo. So we get three E and, well it's not three E and, it's three E and, and then, this is another bit I wasn't 100% sure about. It's very quiet, it's not a loud flam, but I think he plays a flam. So it would be not rim shot. But those last two, I think this is the one, those last two snare drum notes are rim shots. I didn't notate that because it's not important. You sort of feel it yourself. Um, so what I mean I, I wasn't sure about is that it might not be a flam, it might be again. But I didn't hear a hi-hat, it might be uh, it could be, but I think I'm hearing that, that note being a little bit meatier. So I think it's the second bar. One and two and three and four e and a one. Um. Sounds cool as well. So let's hear those two bars uh, up to speed. So on to page three, and at six minute 54, we get uh, Bonham playing around with the bass drum and snare drum in an interesting way. So the first bar, standard stuff, but the hi-hat starts to open on the and of beat two. One and two and three and four, and it then remains open for the second bar. <clears throat> One and two E and a three. Two E and a three. And then three and a four and one. And that second crash symbol is beat one of the next bar. So we get, uh, let's put the two bars together for a change. One and two and three and four and one and two E, a three, a four and one. One and two and three and four and one and two E, a three, a four and one. And up to speed. So then going on to 705, another really cool drum fill. First bar, just groove. One, two, a three, and four, and. 
Both those hi-hats are open for four and, and a little ghost note on the uh of two. One, two, a D and four and. Then we go into another bar of 16th note triplets. Um, and it's sort of building up in volume, but not really, sort of stays sort of the same volume. We get three ta ta and ta ta, two ta ta and ta ta. And the hi-hat's gonna be stepping on one, two, three, four. One ta ta and ta ta, two ta ta and ta ta. The hi-hat closes there on beat two. It's gonna step on beat three and beat four as well. Beat three, he comes up to one rack tom, three ta ta and ta ta. And then, this is the bit I wasn't 100% sure about again. First listening, I thought he's playing four ta ta and ta ta one. But on closer inspection, I think he's playing eighth note triplets. And he does replicate this live a few times. He likes to throw in 16th note triplets, then move to eighth note triplets, then back again. He does this a lot throughout his playing. So it, wouldn't, it makes total sense that he would play this. So we get four triplets. Just easy to play it with your right hand because your drum's over here. If you haven't got four toms or three, two floor toms, then you perhaps start here, that one, and then that one. Uh, well, yeah, there's only, there's only um, three toms being used here, so you could do it on the three tom. I'm using what Bonham would do, using his second floor tom. So we get three to to and to to four triplets, one. And it's a little bit of a feel game because um, if you're not used to going from 16th note triplets to triplets, it can feel very strange, it can be unnatural. You just have to spend time um, practicing it with a metronome. But let me just try to play that bar for you. One to to and to to two to to and to to three to to and to to four triplet one. Again, one to to and to to two to to and to to three to to and to to four triplet one. Gives a real power at the end. You can just play, it doesn't matter, but I think he plays that. So let's hear that up to speed. This next example at 729 uh, has another drum fill in the second bar and um, he's been playing this kind of, um, this lick throughout the song, but this is a, a great example, a longer version of this kind of idea where he's playing ghost notes in between single stroke sixteenths. So the first bar's just groove. One, two, three, and four, and open hi-hat on four. Notice it's not four and this time. The second bar, hi-hat remains open, one, it then closes on the and of beat one, where the, the hands come down to the snare drum. It's all single stroke, this. It's and a two, E and a three, E and a four, and one. And that's the last question was beat one of the next bar. But it's, it's ghosting that, that, that snare drum on two and the uh of two that makes you hear rather, uh, rather than if I play all the notes loudly, you've got to make those ghost notes quiet. Uh, wrong. <laughs> Underneath that, very subtle, there's a bass drum on beat three. You might be forgiven if you missed that. It doesn't really matter. One and a, I just too close the hi hat as well. One and a two e and a three e and a four and one. One and a two, uh, one and a two e and a three e and a four and one. A little bit messed up there. Okay, let's hear that played properly without the mic on. So then just before the song starts to fade out, 8.03, we get this another sort of snare drum uh, effect being added. Um, and it means it's, it's very hard to hear exactly what he's playing, but it has to be 30 second notes because it's too fast for 60 note triplets. So it has to be 30 second notes. It sounds like it's a little bit sloppy, but he comes out perfectly in time. So, uh, but it's, I think it's the effect that's disguising what he's playing that makes it tricky to hear. But yeah, it's just fast 30 second notes. So a whole bar of the buggers. I'm feeling, feeling one and two and three and four and and three and four and one. And how I would naturally play them would be accenting every four notes. But you don't hear on that, that on the recording. It's not da, da, da. It's more smooth. So that makes it a little bit harder for me to play them because I use the accent to keep time of where I am, in which, or what part of the bar I am. Uh, if you just play them all smoothly, then you've got to have a good sense of time because you're not marking it with your own body. 
So you could count it one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a if you wanted to, just two bars of sixteenth notes. But it's uh, it's um, it's up to you how you count it. Let's try and play it slowly. One, two, three, and four, and. By the way, that first bar, we got one and two and. I'm not sure if I explain the first bar to you. So now let me play, uh, attempt to play that up to speed for you. So then right at the end of the song, eight minute 15, just before it completely fades out, we get one little tasty drum fill to try and play. First bar is just groove, one and two and three and four and, open high out on the and of four, and it's then gonna close with the snare drum on beat one with a flam. And one and two and three E and four ta ta and. So that three E and, you could play three E and, but I think he just plays three E and. But then the last one on the lowest tom, Four to to and and the bass drum and the hand comes down together. So one and two and three e and four to to and. So sixty note triplets there at the end. Four to to and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three e and four to to and one. And finally, let's hear that up to speed. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun for me uh, to be able to transcribe, work out, perform and play for you. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download the free PDFs that came with this lesson. And then while you're at my website, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for $97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. And that's coming up to 500 full song lessons. Uh, unlike this lesson where I just taught you the, the, the best parts, the, the major parts, in my full song lessons I teach you the song from start to finish. Every single bar is included. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart for the whole song. And like I said, I've got almost 500 full songs on the website already, including a load of other Led Zeppelin video lessons on the website already. And so thank you for signing up. I'll give you access to hundreds more little videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos, some of which are Bonhams. Uh, I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos, some of which are Bonhams. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, then feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you. <laughs>